Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm joined by my guest Jen Broyles, who is a holistic health coach and breathwork teacher. So Jen helps people to activate their inner healer and unlock their full potential through breathwork. She uses the Soma breath method, which takes fundamental pranayama techniques, puts into a sequence that combines rhythmic breathing to beat-driven music for therapeutic healing and function. These breathing exercises become one's toolbox of techniques that are great to treat or prevent a range of issues that might arise in the body and the mind. Jen launched the Sacred Breath Community to create a space where people can implement and deepen their breathwork practice and experience growth, healing, and transformation. Through workshops, monthly breathwork meditations, live online classes, lectures from guest experts, and one-on-one coaching, members have a variety of modalities available to them anytime, day or night. And in this episode, Jen gives us a 10 minute guided breathwork session, which was absolutely amazing. So if you want to take part in that, definitely tune in towards the end. I felt really great afterwards. I felt really calm and airy. Um, It was towards the end. Otherwise, I don't think I would have been able to go back into my kind of work mode because I felt so zen and amazing. So I highly recommend listening to the full episode. And I really love Jen. She has a great energy and um, I really love learning about breath work because I speak about the benefits of stress management and meditation and all these things. But some people, they they don't really know what that means. They get put off by it. So I think she's created a great um, resource for people and um, the tools to actually get them to do the work. And it is something that's very powerful um, and can have massive effects on stress reduction within the body, which then has a knock-on effect on our hormones, our gut health. And she does share a ton of the benefits during this episode. So hope you enjoy it. First, welcome Jen to the podcast. Could you tell us a little bit more about how you became a holistic health coach and um, decided to specialize in breath work specifically. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Vivian, for having me on. And yes, like you said, I am a health coach and a breath work instructor. And I think like so many of us in the, the world of natural health, we kind of find our way into it through um, looking for answers to either health challenges that we're facing or for, you know, that of a loved one. And that was the case for me. And, you know, I found myself in my early 20s struggling with some digestive issues that were kind of unexplained. And for the longest time, I didn't really say or do anything about them. And at that time, I knew nothing about like health and wellness um, from a more natural standpoint. And um, and I just thought they would go away on their own, and I just kind of dealt with it in silence. And um, it was years later that things kind of progressively got worse, and I, w- I started experiencing other symptoms, um, like anxiety and hormone imbalances and other things that, again, I thought were completely unrelated, not knowing how the mind and body and everything is so connected. Um, And I found myself finally reaching out for help, um, going the conventional route, because truth, truly that's all I I knew. And um, and I found myself seeing a bunch of different doctors, um, different specialists, doing just all kinds of different testing, being prescribed all different kinds of medication. And not feeling any better. And at that time I was working in pharmaceutical sales. I would, that, that's the avenue that I thought provided all the answers and solutions to any health issue. Right. And when it wasn't working for me, um, I started to look elsewhere because I felt like I had exhausted all the options down that path. And so I started searching for answers on my own and it, um, I just kind of intuitively started with nutrition and uh, started diving into books on nutrition, realizing everything I thought I knew about nutrition was inaccurate. And, um, and through that, I started learning about functional medicine and integrative medicine and holistic wellness, um, things that I didn't really know about before. And I was, really just, I don't know, it's like this passion was kind of sparked within me. My eyes were open and, um, and I realized this whole other world 
to health existed. And the more I read and the more I researched and the more I tried things for myself, the more I wanted to share that with others. And so I went back to school and studied integrative nutrition and became a health coach and started working with clients really around nutrition. And a lot of, I, I had a lot of clients that were experiencing uh, gut issues and adrenal fatigue and, and what I found to be like so many common things that people um, suffer with in silence and, or either they go the conventional route and their doctors tell them there's nothing wrong or that's all in their head or whatever. Um, and I think there's so many people out there just looking for support and looking for healing and, and, and answers, um, addressing root cause, not just slapping a bandaid on the symptom. And so, so I started working with clients really in the way of nutrition and, and supplements and things like that. And then, um, I found essential oils and those the essential oils really were helpful for me on a variety of levels from you know the physical support but also stress support emotional support and then i found breath work and breath work was like the icing on the cake for me um i did not did not know what breath work was um in its fullness until i actually experienced it and i was truly just blown away by what breath work can do and just how we when we breathe consciously um, and have that awareness, like when we change our breath, it can truly change so many aspects of our health. And just realizing that like so many of us are breathing incorrectly on a regular basis was very eye-opening to me. And so now I love sharing breath work with people, especially people that um, find it difficult to meditate. Um, I think so many people have just like a really busy mind, myself included, um, just constantly thinking, overthinking, racing mind, racing thoughts, and find traditional meditation like really difficult. Um, breath work is almost like effortless meditation. It really gets you into that deep state of meditation really easily and quickly. So, um, and, and, and just the ability to calm the nervous system through the breath and activate a state where our bodies can heal is really powerful. Mm -hmm. People would overlook it. They're like, oh, breathing, like it should be subconscious. We don't really need to do anything. We're just doing it naturally on autopilot all the time. But I've experienced like amazing transformations from doing it too. So that's what we're going to be focusing on on the episode. But I want to ask with the nutrition side of things, um, what do you feel like helped you most with um, any particular diets or adding or removing any particular foods? Yeah, you know, and I, I've done so many different types of diets and gut healing protocols, and I think they've all served their purpose um, in that given time. I will say like right now, and, and my goal with my clients too is always to, to eventually get to the broadest um, diet, if you will, with the most variety where you still feel good. Um, there may be like some initial restriction or cutting out foods in the beginning to, to heal, but then opening up the doors again to, to more variety. But for me, um, gluten-free for sure. Um, you know, I've been gluten-free for a good number of years now, and that is one thing I plan to stick to. Um, I was dairy-free, like 100% dairy-free for a really long time. And um, now I'll do like grass-fed butter and, um, and small amounts of like high-quality cheese every now and then, um, but lactose-free, still very much, you know, lactose-free. Um, you know, I've done the paleo, I've done keto, I've done, done all low FODMAP, all of these different things. And I feel like I've kind of just found this like customized um, way of eating that works for me. Um, and it's kind of a combination of all of those things. I, um, I'll, I'll have gluten-free grains. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent grain free anymore. Like I was for a long time, but, um, but yeah, just getting back to just real food, you know, cutting out the processed junk and really cutting down on the sugar, especially the refined sugar, um, which I know I'm sure most of your listeners know to do and are and are probably doing. Um, but I do feel like, you know, for some people, there's a time and a place to get a little more tuned in to a specific protocol, whether that's like grain-free or keto or vegan or whatever it is for you. Um, I am a big believer in bio-individuality and I don't promote one way of eating because I don't think we're designed that way. We're not 
we are complex beings. There's no cookie cutter uh, way of doing things that works for every single person. So it really is sometimes a trial and error thing to find out what really works for you and, and energizes you and makes you feel your best. We're definitely on the same page with that. I even did a post yesterday um, talking about skin in particular and how, yes, removing common food allergies like gluten and dairy in the short term can make a huge difference and clear someone's eczema in some cases. But if you've done the diet stuff and you're still not improving, the answer isn't just to keep cutting more and more foods out because that's going to limit the amount of nutrients that you have and going to make it very hard for you to actually heal fully. And for yeah. some people, it's not diet at all that's the problem. It's the stress and adrenals. And they could probably benefit more from the breath work practice rather than adding an extra serving of broccoli or taking out another food group. So we're yes. definitely on the same page. I completely agree. And honestly, like that was the case for me. You know, I was so focused on the nutrition for so long and following all the rules and doing everything by the book. And I got to a certain place and then just kind of hit a plateau. And I was like, I am eating like the cleanest way possible. I'm the healthiest person I know from a nutrition standpoint. And, but I'm not the healthiest person I know. Right. And what is missing? And it was, it was the stress. It was um, the emotional well being. It was all these things that were underlying that I wasn't addressing. And honestly, like being so restrictive and so regimented with my diet was adding more stress. And once I let that go, I really started to feel better. So I'm totally in agreement with mm -hmm. you there. Yeah, I've experienced that too. And for anyone who's listening, I say it all the time, but if you're like, quote, doing all the right things, you're exercising, you're trying to get sleep, you're eating blood sugar balancing meals and as organic as possible the majority of the time and you're still struggling, it's time to get into the energy, stress, mindset, limiting belief work. That's going to probably move the needle a hell of a lot more than just tweaking things um, kind of, and controlling things too much. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested with the essential oils. I think that's when I started following you. I've been following you for a number of years now. Um, awesome. And you, yeah, you, you were someone who was talking about essential oils and I kind of was really interested in that at the time. Um, so tell me a little bit more about why you became interested in them and some of the benefits maybe of essential oils. Yeah. So I love one that essential oils are plant medicine and, um, and that you only need a little bit to really get the benefits and it's not another pill that you need to swallow. So there were a lot of things. Um, and also the, there, to me, I find essential oils to have kind of a fun aspect to them. Like they smell good and you can diffuse them and there's so many different ways to use them. Um, and when I started experimenting with essential oils, I really started to see the benefits um, of using them a variety of different ways, you know, in my diffuser or topically, or even the oils that I use, the brand that I use is one that, you know, the high, one of the highest quality brands out there and is scientifically backed for internal use as well. And so that supplemental form is really, really powerful. And I know there's different schools of thought around the internal use of essential oils, but I encourage all of you to do your research and, um, and, and find out what serves you the best. But I will say essential oils are one thing that I could at the time bring in to my life that smelled good and didn't affect me in a negative way. So at that time, this was many years ago, you know, I um, found that scented bath and body products and scented candles really bothered me. And so I had cut all of that out from my life. And when I found essential oils and realized that, oh my gosh, I can smell these and they smell great and they're not triggering any sort of symptoms. This is amazing. <laughs> like bring these in because I missed those smell good aromas, you know? And of course these smelled so much more natural because they were. Um, and so I just started by diffusing oils in my home. I was like, oh, like my environment smells good again. And I noticed that it really just helped with my stress levels and just calming my mind or boosting my mood. And then as I kind of got into it and started learning about essential oils and doing the research and learning different ways to use them for different purposes, I started using essential oils for gut support and found that certain oils really helped with my digestion, like ginger and peppermint and fennel. And, and then I found certain oils that um, I would use during the day to promote like and help with focus and concentration and productivity 
or energy. And then other ones uh, to use if I felt stressed and overwhelmed, I could diffuse them to really kind of calm my mind and relax and sleep well. And then other oils that help support my immune system or support my hormones. And so it really became just this lifestyle of using essential oils throughout my day and just bringing in and creating new habits around the use of essential oils. And so um, the more I grew in my knowledge and experience, the more I just wanted to share that with others. And then, um, you know, I was recommending them to my clients as well, because um, I think essential oils at the time were becoming kind of a buzzword. They're becoming really popular, but um, I think a lot of people thought they could just go to their local store and buy essential oils, which is not the case. Um, just like with supplements, you really have to do your research and know what you're getting and how they were processed and manufactured and came to market because the essential oil industry is pretty corrupt and around 85% or more of oils on the market are adulterated or they contain synthetics. And so you want to stay away from those. And so if you're using oils for your health, you really want to do your research and know um, where the plants were grown, how they were harvested, how they were distilled. All of these things really matter in terms of getting a therapeutic medicinal grade oil um, that's really going to support you and serve you. The majority of my listeners have hormone imbalances. So this is the Hormones in Harmony podcast. So which particular oils are usually your go-tos for hormones? Oh my gosh. So Clary, Clary Sage is a great oil for hormone support. Uh, thyme oil is really good as well. Um, I use a blend. I don't know if it's okay to, to, yeah. to recommend brands, but I use a blend that um, is put out by doTERRA. And it's called Clary mm -hmm. Calm. And this is a monthly blend for women. So it's designed to support women's hormones. And the cool thing about oils is that they don't contain hormones. They're just, they're, they're more adaptogenic. So they're supporting your body in its natural production of hormones and helping balance things out. So it's giving your body what it needs. And so some of the oils in here are clary sage, lavender, bergamot, Roman chamomile, ylang ylang, cedarwood, geranium, fennel, carrot seed, and vitex. So this combination of oils is really supporting the whole body. It's supporting your adrenals, which are uh, very connected to your um, female hormones. And so it's just helping bring balance and homeostasis back to the body and support natural and healthy hormone production. And the benefits can be pretty instantaneous. So like changing your diet and taking the food out or starting a new supplement. Sometimes it can take a couple of months to really notice. Whereas if you're stressed and you um, inhale some lavender essential oil, I'm pretty sure your mood's going to improve within minutes. Yeah, process. you feel it pretty quickly for sure. So with the whole stress piece, obviously um, changing your diet for the better can reduce stress. Using essential oils can help to reduce stress. Um, what is the reason that we want to be doing that? So how does stress affect hormones and our overall health? Stress affects everything. You know, chronic stress is at the root of, I, I think research has even suggested like 95% of disease. Um, very little disease is actually genetic. Um, and we know through epigenetics that we can turn genes off. And so stress is at the root, chronic stress is at the root of most imbalances that people are dealing with. And so if we learn to address stress, and I don't even like the term manage stress, I would say reduce stress, reduce stress and find ways to become more resilient to stress, we can really start to heal the body and bring things back into balance. You know, most people these days live in a state of fight or flight, this survival mode where um, our nervous system, specifically the sympathetic part of our nervous system is on overdrive. That's your fight or flight survival mode. It is on constant um, overdrive, it's being activated all the time by perceived threats, right? So, you know, this, our, our bodies and, and our stress response was designed to really protect us, um, especially back in the day when there were actual threats present and we had to fight or flee, right? And um, in these days, we don't have to do so much, but we are still dealing with things that trigger us all the time and our mind perceives it as an immediate threat for survival, right? So whether you are sitting in traffic, you get cut off, um, you're in a fight with a spouse, you're having work issues, financial issues, 
this year alone, <laughs> you know, there's just, just in general. Yeah. In general, we're being bombarded, you know, watching the news, like all of these different things kind of trigger us and, um, and our mind perceives it as an immediate danger, immediate threat. And so our sympathetic nervous system is activated and stimulated. Well, that's all well and good if it is acute and we come out of it and go back into a parasympathetic state, which is our rest, relax, digest, heal, restore. But that's not happening often enough. You know, most of us are living in the sympathetic, sympathetic state more often than not. So we really need to have tools that are going to calm our nervous system, uh, really stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the state we need to be in to heal, um, and, and be in that more often. And so it is really bringing awareness to that and then finding tools that really help support that. And the breath really is like one of the best ways to do that and instantly calm down the body. Because if you're breathing long, slow, deep breaths, there's no way that you're in a life or death situation. It exactly. would just never physiologically happen. So could you talk about how breath um, influences our um, nervous system, both positively yeah. and negatively? Yeah, absolutely. So I always like to just encourage people as you're listening to tune into your breath right now and see how you're breathing without, without trying to change it or anything, just be an observer and, and observe how you're breathing in this moment. And maybe do this throughout the day and just observe your breath. Um, what, what many people find is that they're breathing really shallow or fast. They're breathing in and out through their mouth. Their, their chest and their shoulders are rising and falling very visibly. Their abdomen isn't moving at all. Um, or maybe you're holding your breath. I hear that all the time. Oh my gosh, like I was holding my breath and I didn't even realize it. So all of these things are a sign that stress has hijacked your breath, right? So when we are breathing in an erratic pattern, irregular pattern, that leads to erratic, irregular, chaotic thoughts, it perpetuates the stress response. It perpetuates that stress cycle. So when we're stressed, our breath becomes erratic. When our breath becomes erratic, we become more stressed, right? So it's this, this vicious cycle. Most of us, um, our breath has been hijacked by stress. It, our, our breath is really unique in that it is this one physical function in our body that is under the influence of the autonomic nervous system. It happens under um, this involuntary control. So we don't really have to think about it. It keeps us alive. Um, but we can also tune in and control it. So we can bring awareness to our breath and we can consciously change our breath for specific intentions and purposes. And so once we are aware that perhaps we're not breathing correctly, we can start to change that. And through the breath work is one of the best ways to start to create new habits around the way we breathe and start to calm the nervous system. Um, and, and really start to, to heal and rebalance. So the proper way to breathe is on a regular basis um, throughout your day is in and out through the nose and from your diaphragm. So, you know, again, in our modern world, um, especially for women, I feel like, you know, there's this whole like vanity um, side of it of like, suck in your stomach, have a flat belly. If you do that all the time, then I can guarantee you, you're not breathing properly because um, our belly should be relaxed and our belly should expand when, when we breathe in, right? So, um, so breathing in deeply from the diaphragm, letting that belly expand and then exhaling um, and really breathing in a consistent rhythm and slowly, breathing slowly. You know, when we're stressed, we tend to have this rapid breath. Um, so ideally five to six breaths per minute, which most of us are doing double that or more. Um, so if you really tune in and try to breathe five or six breaths a minute, um, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, like that's really slow. That's, you know, like one breath every 10 seconds. And so that's slower than most people are breathing naturally. So, but once you start to do that, then you immediately, I mean, you immediately feel calmer. You immediately feel more relaxed. You immediately feel more centered and grounded and um, can make better decisions and come from, a, come from a place of just clarity and not reactivity. So 
So it really is amazing just, you know, how when you change your breath, you can change a lot about your health and your perceptions and your mindset and, um, and your stress and so many different things. You're literally getting more oxygen to your brain so you can think yeah. clearer when you're stressed, you're thinking irrationally, you're in fight and flight, like reptilian brain. So if we just mm -hmm. stop and take long, slow, deep breath, your thoughts are going to be much clearer and you're probably going to make a decision a lot easier and faster. And, that, and that's exactly right. And like, so one of the best tools, like one of the easiest tools you can do whenever you do feel overwhelmed or stressed out or just like you can't handle life right now, just pause for just a minute and take some deep breaths and you can count, count in for four and out for four in for four and out for four. You can start there and maybe work your way up to in for six and out for six. And when you do that and do it for one or two minutes, you can really just start to calm things down and, um, and just come back to come back to center. So And it's free. So rather than reaching for a bottle of adaptogens or like a L-theanine supplement like some people do, like why not just mm -hmm. use your body's yeah. natural wisdom tools? Breath. Yeah, it's this gift that we have, you know, it's, it, 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 it really, I don't, you know, when you start to think about it, you're like, why don't we pay more attention to it? It's, you know, it, it's this function, it's, it's this gift of life, truly, you know, it's the first thing we do when we come into the world is take this breath in. And the last thing we do when we leave the world is exhale this breath out. And everything you do in between um, really ties to the breath. And so, it, you know, why aren't we paying more attention to our breath? It is this truly this, this life force energy, this gift of, of life that we've been given. And um, I think it's time that we tune into it a little bit more. Yeah, we're taking it for granted. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw like a meme ages ago, it was saying you don't appreciate like breathing until you, you're, you've got like a cold or a flu and your nose is all stuffed up. And then that first breath that you take, it's so refreshing. And then we just it just goes into the back of our mind and we don't really think about it anymore. And I'm interested with the difference between nose and mouth breathing. Like why is that important? Yeah. So nostril breathing is really important, specifically breathing in through the nostrils because one, um, your nostrils filter the air you're breathing in. So if you want to breathe in cleaner air, breathe through your nose. Right. And it also, helps in the production of nitric oxide, which is really important as well. Um, you know, it allows for a greater transfer of oxygen to the blood and, and nitric oxide is really effective in also defending against pathogens. So bacteria, fungus, viruses, parasites. Um, and it's very balancing to the nervous system when you're breathing in through your nose, the oxygen is going in at kind of a slower rate. So, so you can just, um, help that oxy oxygen penetrate better into your body and into, into the blood. So there's a lot of benefits for, for nostril breathing. It also warms the air um, and it moisturizes the air. So if you find that you breathe through your mouth and, and a lot of us do, the, do this at night. So if you're breathing through your mouth at night, a, a good sign is do you wake up with a dry mouth? right? So that's, that could tell you that, yeah, you're breathing through your mouth at night because your mouth doesn't have the ability to moisturize the air and warm the air that you're breathing in. So really practicing that nostril breathing. Um, I, there's even such a thing as mouth tape. <laughs> I used to do it. It really I, works. Yeah, to fix your breath. And so um, some people will sleep with mouth tape to really start to correct their breathing and start breathing in through their nose. And also if you're breathing in through your mouth all the time, it can cause sinus congestion. Um, it, it can, you know, it can lead to other symptoms, high blood pressure, all sorts of things that you wouldn't even think are related to the breath. Um, but, but it throws a lot of things off if you're, if you're mouth breathing on a, on a constant basis. It's hard to do those deep diaphragmatic breaths yeah. if it's going through your mouth. And to me, it's mm -hmm. more of a sign that you're in a stressed out state. Like if you were running from a saber tooth tiger, you wouldn't be able to breathe through your nose. So it's like mm -hmm. tricking your body into thinking that you're stressed. So you can yeah. do the opposite and trick your body into thinking that it's calm by doing it through your nose. But I was a, a, an avid mouth taper for a while. I track my sleep. I've got an aura ring. Yes, um, awesome. Yeah, and it really made a huge difference to me. So I don't do it anymore because the brand Somnifix, it's not really available 
in the UK anymore. So I really mm -hmm. uh, promote it. Like if someone's in the US, really good product. Um, yeah, that's what that's what we have. That's yeah. the mouth tape we have. Yeah, yeah. I wish we. Great. I was trying it with just like regular tape, and it just was not working. <laughs> like rip yeah. off the skin of my lips. So it needs to be a special tape. Yeah, it does. Like, don't use duct tape or anything like that. Like, <laughs> well, it's not a good use, idea. Yeah, use legit mouth tape because it's it's made to put on your skin. Yeah, sure. but my heart rate was lower. My HRV, so my recovery heart rate variability was higher, which is a good Amazing. sign. My deep sleep yeah. was better, so I can totally um I can totally test to that being a good option. Yeah. So what's the difference? What are the different types of breath work um, that mm -hmm. are um available for doing um, and mm -hmm. the soma one that you do how is that different yeah so there's a lot of different forms of breath work out there um, and they all serve their own purposes so i've i've experimented and and done several different types um, holotropic breath work transformational breath work um, there's a, another breath work that that's similar to those where it's like a two one rhythm of, of breath work um there's a lot of different ones rebirthing what's the so one I that wim hof does because that was like yeah really so there's a the wim hof technique like... and wim hof technique actually there's some similarities between that and soma so um so wim hof and the creator of soma are good friends and so um and, and so there are some similarities there but with a lot of these forms of breath work, they're really designed uh, for trauma release, which is great, but they're not designed to be done on a daily basis. So a lot of them are this hyperventilation style of breathing where you're breathing in and out through your mouth really fast. Um, and that is stimulating the stress response. And so it's not something you want to do every day. And I highly recommend if you do it, do it with a guide because um, it, it is, it's a really powerful way to release deep trauma, um, subconscious trauma, stored memories, trapped emotions, all of that stuff. But it's not ideal for every day and it's not going to teach you how to breathe properly. Yeah, uh, I tried Soma, that before and I was like, yeah. literally felt like I was going to pass out. And I had a cup of yeah. coffee before and my heart rate was like through the roof. I was like, and I have low blood pressure. So I was like, yeah. this is not a good combination, but. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. Like I've done, I, I, I've done those forms of breath work several times over the past uh, couple years and they are incredibly healing. Um, but I've always done it with a guide or instructor like in an in-person setting um and it's been some powerful releases uh but again like maybe once or twice a year once a quarter something like that if that's something you feel like an area where you need to to have some healing but um with soma breath it is we're breathing slower we're breathing in a rhythm to beats of music. So what I love about the breath work that I teach is that music is a big part of it. And the music itself is really healing and transformational and it really helps kind of get your brain waves into a calmer, more meditative state as well. But we're breathing in beats to the rhythm of music. We're breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And so the typical rhythms are like in for four and out for four or um, in for two and out for four. So oftentimes like if we extend the exhale or double the length of the exhale, we're really focusing on activating the parasympathetic nervous system that rest, relax and digest. Because when you breathe in, you stimulate your sympathetic nervous system. When you breathe out, you stimulate your parasympathetic. So if we extend the length of the exhale, we're really getting into that parasympathetic state. So, so this breath work is really balancing. It's really harmonizing. It's really calming. Um, it also really helps with, you know, um, improving productivity and focus and clarity and gaining insights. It gets you into a really deep meditative state almost effortlessly. And this rhythmic form of breathing reduces oxidative stress. It shuts off just overall mental and emotional stress. It increases heart rate variability, which you made reference to. It helps facilitate lymphatic drainage, so it's really supportive to your immune system and detoxification. It's great for gut health. It's been even like rhythmic diaphragmatic breathing has been linked to healing IBS. Um, and I feel like this breath work really addresses like physical healing because it really activates this inner healer and this inner pharmacy that is within all of us. Um, 
it, it helps with reducing anxiety and depression, but it also has an emotional component. It, it still helps release trapped emotions and clear negative imprints and traumas from early life and re-imprint your mind with more empowering beliefs and habits. Um, so it, it addresses the physical, the mental, the emotional healing, and even like just, um, connecting on a spiritual level as well. It's really, really beautiful. And then in addition to the rhythmic breathing that we're doing, we're also doing some breath holds. So you see that in the Wim Hof technique, like this, this breath retention or intermittent hypoxia, where we're holding our breath for a period of time. And what this does is it, um, it lowers oxygen levels in the body for a brief period of time. So your body ad adapts to having less oxygen and it starts to become more efficient in producing energy. And we're also putting a positive stress response on the body when we do this breath retention. And what this does over time is it makes you more resilient to stress. So over time, the things that used to trigger you or stress you out or throw you off really don't bother you anymore, which is really incredible. Um, and this is also a great time to really access your subconscious mind, go into that deep state of meditation where you can begin reprogramming imprints that might be holding you back and um, holding you back from being at your best and help you awaken to your full human potential. Is there anyone who shouldn't do this? Like people with blood pressure issues or mm -hmm. tra like severe trauma? Yeah, so with the breath retention, um, we do recommend leaving out the breath holds for anyone with unmanaged high blood pressure, epilepsy, heart conditions, pregnancy, and cancer, unless it's been recommended or prescribed by a doctor. Um, and so for people like that that come to my breathwork classes, I just always say keep doing the rhythmic breathing during the phases of the breath holds because the rhythmic breathing by itself is so powerful that you're still going to get really good benefit and everyone can benefit from rhythmic breathing. Would you rather someone do like 10 minutes every single morning before they go to work or just incorporate like I call them um, with my clients mindful moments throughout the day um, where they like go to the bathroom and sit there for five seconds longer and do five slow deep breaths so which mm. has like the most benefits. Ideally oh if they gosh. could do both that would yeah, be Yeah I know I want to say both but um <laughs> I say do what you can. So if you can implement a 10 to 20 minute breath work practice every day, every morning or at night before bed, that's beautiful. And I think you're, that would be my number one recommendation. Um, but if that is, if you're not ready for that right now, um, then at least sprinkle it in throughout the day, you know, just take pauses, um, during work, even if it's one or two minutes to just, Step away from the computer, step away from all your electronics, close your eyes and do some deep breathing. Um, do, you can do rhythmic breathing while you're in the car, you know, don't do the breath holds or anything like that, but like do your, you can rhythmic, do rhythmic breathing while you're in the car. Um, just any time where you can take a break and breathe consciously for a couple of minutes is going to be beneficial. But if you can set aside some time every day to do a deeper practice of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you're going to see some really great benefits. And how do most people feel afterwards? Do they feel like more energized? So it might potentially affect their sleep or does it make you feel really tired and relaxed and drowsy afterwards? So it may be better to do in the evening or is everyone different? So everyone's different. And even like every single breath work experience that you do is different because you're in a different State, you're in a different place, different circumstances, every second of every day. But um, there's certain breathwork practices that are good for in the morning to energize you. And then there's other ones that are really good at night to help unwind and put you to sleep. So energizing breathwork, you know, I teach a lot of online breathwork classes and the ones I do in the morning, we're, we, we move the body, we may, um, you know, do just a little stretching or dancing or just moving the body in a way that feels good. Um, I like to incorporate shaking exercises because shaking just really helps release tension and trauma um, and anything that just isn't serving you and you need to let go. You can shake, literally shake it off. Um, and then we'll go into breath work. And a lot of times we'll do more of like a even rhythm, like in for four and out for four. And a lot of times we'll speed it up too. So in for two and out for two in for one out for one. So in, out, in, out, that's very energizing. Um, 
the breath work that's really good to do if you are wanting to fall asleep and unwind at the end of the day, again, is, you know, extending the length of your exhale. So in for two and out for four or in for four and out for eight. And that's just really calming to the mind and body and, um, and it's great at the night before bed. And what's the type that you're going to be walking us through today? Because I have no idea what time of day or evening someone's yep. going to be listening. So just, give, just to give them a heads up so they're not falling asleep at work. Exactly. So first, we're just going to do 10 minutes. So it's not going to be enough to like, you know, okay. you're not going to fall asleep. You, you're going to feel calm. I think you'll feel calm because we're going to breathe in for two and out for four. So we're really going to work on um, bringing the nervous system back to a calmer state and activating the parasympathetic nervous system. So whether you're at work and you're going to take a 10 minute break and do this, that's going to be really good because it's just going to kind of reset you. Um, or if it's nighttime when you're listening to this and then you can absolutely do this in bed. Um, but yeah, this will be a more calming experience. Perfect. And yeah, just if anyone's listening, if you want to put this on pause right now, just make a note of what time um, in the episode this is happening. And then you can come back to it, listen to it multiple times. But is there anything else you want to add about the breathwork practice or anything like that before we get into it? Because we'll probably be pretty chilled afterwards. Um, <laughs> and my brain may not be as sharp and on point. Who knows? We'll see. But that I want is, to make sure we yes. cover everything. That is totally fine. So, um, the the music allow the music to guide you it has breath sounds and counting built in so again you're going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth in for two out for four and then at the end of the breathing i'm going to invite you to take a deep breath fully in and fully out and hold your breath if at any point you need to take a breath just take a quick sip in and out and continue to hold and then i'll invite you to take a deep breath fully in and hold your breath on the inhale. And at the same time, you're gonna do what's called a mula bandha lock. You're gonna contract your pelvic floor muscles and imagine energy shooting up from your root up into your midbrain, the spirit. This part is kind of energizing and exciting and it helps stimulate the production of serotonin and dopamine. Um, so it's a really cool experience. You're gonna hold your breath on the inhale and then I'll invite you to fully exhale and we will be done. So I'm gonna start out with just a really short kind of gratitude meditation to kind of get us into that space. And then we'll move into the breath. And um, you can do this one sitting up or lying down. Just make sure you're in a comfortable space with no distractions. Don't do this if you're driving. Um, and and um, enjoy. Yeah, I'm doing this as well. Let me, let me set myself up comfortably. <laughs> yes, perfect. And you lead the way. Okay, here we go. Sitting comfortably, with your back straight in an upright position, or lying down with your arms by your side and your legs out straight where you won't be disturbed. Now bring your awareness to your breath. As you breathe in and out. Bring your awareness to an intention of gratitude. by becoming aware of a time when you were truly grateful. Grateful for being alive, for being a human in this incredible experience called life. And imagine there's a movie playing in your mind and project that movie out where you are the main character, doing what it is that makes you feel truly grateful. And for a moment, just embody those feelings 
sensations of deep gratitude. Project this movie out in your mind's eye. Embody these feelings of deep gratitude as though they're happening right now. Carry forward this vision throughout this journey as we breathe together, breathing in and out. Notice how the feelings of gratitude expand and amplify and make it real by turning up the dial on those good sensations. We begin to breathe in a rhythm in for two and out for four. Let's begin to breathe in beats. through the nose, out through the mouth, keeping a consistent rhythm with every breath you take. Notice as you breathe, the feeling of gratitude expands. Turn up the dial on those good sensations with every breath you take in and out. Imagine you're breathing in gratitude and breathing out love, all of those good feelings and good sensations. Breathing in and out in a slow, smooth, consistent rhythm. you breathe in and out, imagine these feelings of gratitude are expanding into every cell of your body, healing and nourishing you with these good feelings and good sensations of gratitude, joy, bliss, feeling the expansion throughout your body as you wake up all of your blood vessels. Feeling a warm, tingling sensation growing throughout your body. Notice as you breathe in a rhythm, the feeling of gratitude grows and expands. Notice where this feeling begins from and give it a color. Observe this color expanding and rising with every breath you take in and out. Notice as it begins to expand, so does the feeling of deep gratitude. 
joy, bliss, and all of the good feelings, being grateful. Keep connecting, dissolving into the sacred sound of your own breath, surrendering deeper and deeper. Take a big breath fully in and fully out. <sighs> Exhaling all the air in your lungs and holding your breath. As you hold your breath, you go into a moment of deep relaxation and inner peace. You press pause on life go into a moment of deep meditation. This allows the thought files to reassemble, giving you a sense of freedom, clarity, and joy. And if you get an urge to breathe, just take a quick sip in and out and continue to hold going back into that deep state of meditation, bringing awareness to those good feelings and good sensations, to all of this energy you've brought into your body, healing and nourishing every cell. You go deeper and deeper into your own mind. Enjoy the bliss. real big urge to breathe. Take a big breath fully in. Hold. Squeeze the mula bandha, contracting those pelvic floor muscles. Imagine energy shooting up from your root chakra, up your spine, into your midbrain, focusing on your third eye. You're brilliant. You're radiant, you're infinite. You have everything you need to receive love, health, abundance, joy, already within you. And then exhale with a sigh of good feelings. Turning to slow, relaxed breathing. Slowly coming back to your body, moving your fingers and toes, rolling your shoulders. time allowing your eyes to flutter open coming back into the room wow <laughs> I'm like a little bit spacey eh? <laughs> felt like way longer than 10 minutes I will say that wow yeah yeah, it's so powerful. I'll give some insight as to like how I felt during that. Yeah. So the 
um, the two full breathing felt mm -hmm. a little bit lightheaded at points, but I know mm -hmm. that that can be completely normal. Um, my hands were freezing like, throughout most of that. And then at the end, um, my, the color that I envisioned was yellow. And then at the end, I could see kind of through my third eye, all of these colors swirling like yellows and purples and greens, like a rainbow with my eyes closed. So very powerful. I love that. That is beautiful. Yes. I, I love hearing other people's experiences and it's amazing what you can experience in just 10 minutes. Exactly. Of yeah. Crazy. So how can everyone like access this? Do you do online? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it group work? Are there any apps or anything? Yeah. Resources? yeah. So I do it all. I, I do private sessions. So I do work with private clients. Um, we can do all of it through zoom. So I work with people everywhere. Um, they don't have to be local to where I am. Um, we can do these sessions one-on-one. -on -one. I also do online group sessions as well. And I also have a community, a breathwork community called the Sacred Breath Community. And that's really designed for people that want to implement a breathwork practice, want to learn more about breathwork and have a way where it's accessible, it's affordable, um, you have support and accountability. And that's really what this online community is all about. So um, so the, the Sacred Breath Community, you get access to online breathwork classes every month um, that are group classes. So you come together live and online um, several times every month. And you also get access to the recordings of those classes too. So you can go back and do those on, on your own time as well. Um, those classes, my online classes are an hour long. So we go deep. Uh, we do several rounds of what we just experienced. And then I also have in the community audio breathwork meditations that you can download and do on your own time and those are great for daily practice so those range from 10 to 20 minutes and those are great to do um, any time of day that works for you first thing in the morning middle of the day at night before bed and you get access to a number of other breathing techniques too so the sacred breath community um, is is a great option if you're wanting to dive a little deeper and i'm offering a seven day free trial to that right now Amazing. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Amazing. So it feels so, so calm yeah, you go to my and light and airy right now. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, oh, it, yeah, it just, it totally resets you and just kind of, yeah. I mean, the testimonials I receive after classes are like, people feel blissful. They feel light, free, calm. Just the stress has melted away. It really is just truly transformative. So. I wish all my podcast guests we could do this at the end. I know. <laughs> right? Might make it a new essential thing in the new year. Yes, yes. Must do a breathwork practice to finish. For but sure. on every episode that I do, I do finish with a few final questions. So I, okay. I have to add them in. The first one is what's your go to breakfast? My go to breakfast is a smoothie. Yeah. Um, so first I start, I, I do like my coffee. I drink bulletproof coffee mm -hmm. and blend it with my collagen peptides and my coconut oil. And I love starting my morning with that. And then I have a smoothie that usually contains um, like a nut, a nut milk, like cashew or coconut milk, um, banana, maybe some blueberries, maca powder, a plant protein powder, uh, cacao, all those Oh, reishi. Yeah. I think that's reishi mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. So all those wonderful things. You're like me. You like put the whole kitchen cupboard yes. in there. <laughs> I feel like a witch's cauldron, like throwing yeah, a little bit of everything. Exactly it. Amazing. <laughs> What's one product that you couldn't live without? Hmm. That's a great question. One product I couldn't live without. Um, it's got to be my oils. Mm -hmm. Frankincense oil. I love my frankincense. Amazing. <laughs> and then a piece of takeaway advice. So to sum up everything that we've covered in this episode, what can you leave the listeners with? Mm. Slow your breath. Yeah. <laughs> Take Simple, time to breathe. It's going to be yes. like the most effective thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then very last one, can you remind everyone your website, social media, I will link those in the um, show notes as well. Yeah, absolutely. So my website is my name, jenbroyles.com. So I'd love for you to check that out. You can find um, information about my sacred breath community on my website. I also have some free 
um, free gifts, uh, like a free breathwork meditation, a breath quiz, an essential oils guide. There's a lot of fun free stuff on there. And then my social media, Instagram is at Jen Broyles Health Coach. And then on Facebook, if you search Jen Broyles, you can find me um, as well. So, so I'm on all the different social media platforms. Amazing. I'm sure everyone's going to want to follow you after this. And uh, I've really enjoyed this episode and connecting with you, Jen. So thank you again. Um, this has been amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Vivian. It's been fun. Thank you.